Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I'm going to help you set up Citra for Windows. This is an easy one. We're going to head to citra-mu.org and then click the download tab at the top and then we want to go to the manual download section. There's two builds here. There's the nightly build and the canary build. We want the canary build for this. And it might look a little complicated here, but the first Windows icon is a 7-zip file and the second one is a zip file. If you already have 7-zip installed, you can click the first one. Otherwise, if you don't want to install it, click the second. Once you download whatever zip file that you grabbed, open it up and then you just need to extract it. So if you're using 7-zip, you would extract it with that or you can use Windows built-in tool to do so. And then inside the folder, you're going to see all of the different items that Citra uses uh, and all the little applications. But what we do want is citra-qt.exe. That gives us a GUI so we could actually do things with it. Now, this is the Citra actual user interface. So this is where you're going to do everything that you want to do within Citra. The first thing that we want to do is add some games though. So let's double click to add a folder and then you want to browse to where you have your 3DS ROMs. If you don't have any 3DS ROMs and you're looking for some, I made a video on how to find ROMs in BIOS files that I'll link in the description. Once you add your folder, you should see all of your games populate and you'll see them all here. If it's not showing up, you might have them in the wrong format. I have them in CCI, but there's also 3DS, CIA, and there's some other ones as well. The next thing we want to do is add updates. So if you go to File, Install CIA, and my updates are in a CIA file format, I can select them all and just add them in and then it'll update. But yours might be in a different format, so just keep that in mind. So just double check, make sure that what you have is compatible with Citra. And you can see in the bottom right that it's progressing to add all of your updates to the ROMs. While that's going on, let's go to emulation and we'll head over to configure. Now, one setting that you could change here is confirming exit while emulation is running. Basically, it's going to pop up with a, do you want to exit whenever you want to leave a game? So it's up to you if you want that check. Otherwise, I don't really touch any of the other options here and we can move on to system. This is if you want to change any of the built-in 3DS kind of username, birthday, and all that sort of thing. Up to you if you want to change that. Heading over to graphics, and this is probably where you'll spend most of your time. You can change the native resolution to an upscale if you want. So if you have something like a 1080p monitor, you can change that here. Otherwise, you could also change the default screen layout, and I'll show you later what those look like. Advanced is also an area you'll spend some time in. We want to change to Vulkan, as Citra just added Vulkan support, and you might have to swap back and forth sometimes, but we do want to enable asynchronous shader compilation. Now, if you're finding games are having issues with crashing or not running well or anything like that, you might want to swap back from Vulkan to OpenGL and maybe uncheck the setting that we just checked. But you should be good for most games. Now we had two controls and in controls is where you would map for if you want to use the keyboard or I'm going to be using my Xbox One controller. So I'm going to connect my Xbox One controller and we have not mapped anything in here before, but it's extremely easy, especially if you're using an X input controller like mine. Once you've connected your controller, you can click auto map, then click OK and just move the joystick. And it might actually auto map your controls for you like it does for mine. However, if it doesn't do that or you're finding it's way off, feel free to just map everything on your own. You can just click each key, push the button on your controller to what you want it to be, and just keep going until you're done. Now, one thing I do have to mention is for some odd reason, the hotkeys are only mapped to keyboards. So you don't have actual gamepad mappings for the hotkeys. 
and that is extremely annoying for swapping screens. So just keep that in mind. There are third-party tools that people use, but that'll be up to you if you want to go down that road. If we open up a game, you might get a pop-up about a Windows firewall, and you can just allow it. But let's just see what this looks like as of right now. And you can see here, we have it at the native resolution, so it doesn't look extremely good, but it's running, we're perfect, and we can go ahead and change some of the screen layouts at the top if we want to. Just going through the different options available to you, and this will be personal preference for what you want to have. Since we don't have a dedicated swap screen button, you might have to come up here to swap them, but I would prefer just having dual screens up, and it's a little bit better. For me, I think side-by-side -side screen is probably going to be the best one. You can also go view and full screen to change it to full screen mode. You can also load and save states at the top, but let's head back to the main ROM directory and we can look at some other things. If you right click a game, you can see the save data location and where it saves it. If you want to move save data to a different device or anywhere else. Also, you can check the mods location and where you could put mods if you have them. And lastly, if we click Properties, this is where you can set specific game settings for that game. So, you can basically change anything you want and it'll only apply to that specific game. This is extremely helpful if you're finding that a game isn't running with a certain setting and you have to make a change. This is also where you could add cheats if you wanted to. As far as Citra goes, that was it. There isn't much else that you need to know about this program. This is how it all works. And if you want to use a front end to launch all these games, check out my Play Night video guide as that might help you and you can connect it to Citra so you don't have to actually open this program to launch any games. Don't forget to like and sub to help this channel grow and hope you all have a good one.